Hey everybody, once again you're here for your Castle Rev B 2020 from Folger Tech. Today's video, it's been a long time coming, I've been a little sick so I apologize, but it's on the leveling uh, and the probe and a few other things that we're going to be able to help you out here with and hopefully get you going a little quicker than I did. So, jump right into it, try to keep this fast and simple. We go over to our Repetier. We go over to our Repetier. And the first thing we want to do now that we've got it all good to going and good to go and ready to go is we want to go ahead and home that. So as it homes, we're going to start typing again right into that G code box as we always do. G zero Z ten F three thousand. Again, the Z can be whatever you want depending on how confident you are on your settings. That initial Z height that we set in the the firmware and then the F is the speed. We go ahead and we send that down, you'll see it in the camera. I do apologize, I am still a little sick so you may hear me cough a bit. Alright, so there we are and we have it down at 10. We're going to go ahead and we are going to lower this down almost to the bed, one or two, whatever works for you. And we're going to take a pen, just a sharpie like this. We're going to go ahead we're going to kind of eyeball where the center of that Z probe is and we're going to lift it up just a bit and make a mark maybe lift it up so we can have alright so now we have a mark right in the center where that Z probe is put our pen down and then what we want to do is we want to go ahead and lower that back down maybe two or three off two seems to be the magic number for everybody online and we want to go ahead and we want to move our print nozzle the center of the head, the hot end, whatever you want to call it. Again, lots of different terminologies out there. We want to go ahead and move that until it's directly over top of that little dot. So that was wrong. All right, we're close. Oh, the other way. All right, we'll switch you back over to Repetier. As you can see, we have an X of 2, a Y of negative 30. It's directly over that dot. And now we're going to go back to our firmware, and we're going to find this, the Z-probe offset right here. And as you can see, I've already got it set up because I've already done it. 2, negative 30. Awesome. Exactly what we wanted. It hasn't moved, which it shouldn't because it's a fixed point, that Z-probe's point. So, the next one is the Z. How do we get the Z? We go back over to our Repetier. We go ahead, we can put that back in the middle. Let's see, we've got X at 2, so we'll put him back and we'll put the Y back to the middle we're gonna lower him all the way down all right so I'm assuming that you've already done the bed leveling now the bed leveling is real simple if you don't know how it is it's that paper method that you have there let me see if I've got my paper here he is and I tried and true piece of paper and what we're looking for and mine's a little close because I've made adjustments but you know, I wanted to have that paper under there. So if you've already done that, which you should have, to get that overall bed height, you know, you have your paper, it goes underneath that point one or so and moves freely. All right. So what we're looking at here, and I'm going to grab my camera here now. We're going to try to zoom in a bit. What we're looking at is we want that little LED on top of the... On top, there he is. Now you can see him light up. So... What I want to do is I want to get it all the way down. We want to make sure it's lit up. If it's not lit up, something's not right. What you can try is you can actually take your finger and you can actually push down on it and get it a little closer and see if it lights up. Maybe you're just too far away, in which case you would move the whole Z probe up a bit. Uh, if you can't do that, you may loosen it up, try to bump it down, put it right in there. But I've got a better technique for you. We're going to zoom back out. If you're not sure if it's working or not, you go ahead and you lift it up. This uses kind of a metal detector philosophy uh, on how to get that bed, which is why you need metal, not glass. If you have glass and you put glass on there, shame on you. You have to do this part first. Take a metal tool, it doesn't matter what it is, we stick it under there, and look, that light comes back on when we get close. So there's another way to tell. So we go ahead, we're going to put him back down. I'm going to put him all the way down. So he's touching the bed, and when the light comes on. And then what I want to do is I want to bump it up, in small increments, 0.1 increments will do until, oh, it goes off. Well, there you go. We switch back over to Repetier. You can see it says 0.3. I bump it down to 0.2. We switch back over to the video, and there it is. It's lit up. So our offset is somewhere between 0.2 and 0.3.
how precise do we need to make it? You know, if you want to spend the time and do the 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 hundredths, you know, place of the decimal point, that's fine. Uh, but when your layers are only 0.2 apart or something, you know, it's you, maybe a little more accuracy could be better. But in my opinion, you don't need any more than that. And that is just an opinion. It's not fact. It's not you know tried and true methodology. It's just opinion of what I know works. And that's a big thing with my videos. If you haven't already guessed, I'm not an expert. I'm not anything close to an expert. I'm just an informed person that's passing it along to you in hopes that you can save some time because here we are a month later and I am still battling with this. Anyway, so we have that. We go back to our, what you call it here, firmware. Thank you. And we need to make that a negative because we're saying that that Z probe is detecting below the, the hot end. So it's a negative value. Your hot end would be zero, and anything below it would be negative. Anything above it is positive. So we put in the negative 0.2, we, and we save our, our firmware back. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Now, a few notes on the bed itself. Some things that I found. Um, I had a lot of problems with one aspect of my printing. We're going to go ahead and home this here. And it turned out to be something that was so simple, that I was just appalled when I figured it out. So somebody told me, hey, you know, you should make sure that that bed is perpendicular to your vertical rods. And I said, well, gee, what a novel idea, you know? That, that does stand to reason that, you know, maybe that's a, a nice worthwhile thing to do. Um, you know, the bed on this particular model does come uh, hard mounted. Now what I've done, and I will post the model for this, is I've made mine spring loaded so that I can adjust it. This was some Ace hardware and uh, some of my own modeling. I'll put the link down there to it. Um, simple model, captured nut, you'll need an M3 screw and an M3 nut to go on there, but it does help. And, uh, and one thing I'll get to later on is why I did that. So we have that. The way that I did the perpendicular is I just took my, my ruler and I just laid it across. And the ruler, I would just have to assume, is a fairly level piece. And all I did, and I'll just use something else that I have here, is I just laid it across my bed and lined it up. Let's do a different one. I just laid it across my bed, lined it up, and made sure that the end was flush. Now you would want to use a, a, a right angle or a square, whatever you want to call it, um, but that's the simplest way to do it, is just to use something that you know is pretty square, lay it across the bed, make sure there's no gap over here, lift it, lower it, maybe even use a regular level, match it up to your, your supports level on the top, and go from there. Uh, a lot of people say that's not necessary and that's why it's hard mounted, but it's something that I found that did help a little bit. And not so much on the leveling, but actually on the scale of the model that's being printed. So once we have that all done and we have those numbers in and our firmware loaded, real simple, all we do is we go ahead and we home it. And we'll switch back over to the Repetier here. And we're going to type in, ready? G29. And we're going to let it go. Now what it's going to do is it's going to lower itself down. You'll see it in the video here. It's going to do a grid pattern and we can actually set that up too. You'll see my little string here in the video. I had a bit of a problem with these uh, wire ties getting caught on the edge of my thing here and causing a big rift in my prints. Uh, I have been able to get some good prints. Um, let me see if I can find one here for you. I don't have one. But I have my Marvin of course. Everybody loves Marvin. There he is. He printed out wonderfully. I always look at the backside there. This one had one next to it, so its backside's a little rough. Um, I did do a nice little angel there. Some of you might know where that guy's from. Uh oh, now look what I did. If you know where that's from, you're probably a little scared. But anyway, I did get some good prints on it. I am still printing out of out of round, out of scale. But that's what my next video is going to go over. So I hope you stick around. That one's very informative. So what it's going to do, and we're going to fast forward through this is it's going to do this grid pattern. And when it's done, we'll go ahead and catch back up. All right, and it's just finished. Now you can see it let, picks itself back up here. And before we touch anything, and this is super important here, before we touch anything, we go back to our repetitive, we type in the magic number M500, and we hit enter. Bam. That's what we want. And that's a big thing that a lot of the instructions that I found tend to forget. And while we're in Repetier, what you should have seen is in this output window, look at this grid of values. This is a wonderful grid. It tells you a lot if you can read it. What we're looking at is a grid of values that basically represent the height of the bed as per 
the the node the the thing <laughs> the level sensor gosh I'm having a rough day here rough night equals rough day you know um, anyway when we see this negative point two that's not always a good thing because that means it went down to where it thinks it should be to its maximum and it didn't find it so it safely said you know for safety's sake I guess we should say it said I'm not gonna go any further I'm gonna you know stop here. And it did, and it went back up. So there's a row here that has all negative twos, and there's a row that has none. So what we're basically seeing is that where it started, which we'll switch back over here, you know, it started over on this side. This side's probably too darn low, and we should probably lift that up, you know, or adjust something to make sure that this is up a little higher. And then that last row, which was way over on this side, kind of does this pattern here. It might be a little high. You know, it, what I like to see is anything that's not that that Z offset. If you're not seeing a Z offset, I'd say that's a pretty good deal. But there are some caveats to that because if it's really far off, if you say, well, I just don't want to see that Z offset, so I'm going to make that number huge. I'm going to make it negative four or negative six, and it'll pick it up every time, sure. But then what you're going to have is you're going to have those values. Your bed's going to be level, but your head's going to be way up high off of it. So you want to have that as close as you can because it does just basically take that Z offset and minus it from these values to get that overall offset. The M500 saves it into the setting somewhere. I don't know where. I haven't been able to get a straight answer on that, but it saves it. So we've done that. We've done the M500. That's pretty much it. You should be able to go ahead and print from there. That being said, it's not quite a straight up thing. When I do this, and I do it just the way that I said I did it. Uh, it doesn't always put itself down on the bed, so that's why I kind of did those um, spring-loaded bed leveling nuts and bolts because what I'll find is that it, it's always eh, just a little off. It's it's level, but it's just a little off on one side or a little off in the middle or you know off overall for some reason. And, and you know, you expect that with a 3D printer. I'm not saying that the auto bed leveling is. Uh, the best thing, but it's not the worst. I have a lot of other printers that don't have it, and you know, once you get past the initial, the initial setup, it's fine. This one definitely shortens that initial setup. So a few things before we go here. There are some other uh, settings that we can do in the firmware. The one right above that, where it says 20, excuse me, I'm still sick. The one right above that says 20, that's how many millimeters that it's gonna lift up in between each one of those probes. You could take that number and you could really shrink that number down and get a, you know, save yourself 30 seconds of your life every time you do that. That's great if you want to do it, not required. This auto leveling grid right here, that's another thing. You can actually increase that and give yourself more of a grid. It kind of is your scale as we switch back over here. Uh, if I did, you know, a 15, or sorry, a 10 in there, it would only do something maybe about 50 centimeters uh, in diameter. The 15 that I have in there now seems to do something to the effect of 75 centimeters or 75 millimeters in diameter. And I've actually bumped it to 20 and it will unfortunately go off of the bed and not pick it up at all. So definitely be careful when adjusting that. But it is something that you can adjust. If you plan on printing really small things, I do find that lowering that value definitely uh, will give you a smaller area. And it does seem to make small prints much more accurate right in the center. But of course you get that distortion as you go out. Uh, and now the other thing to remember is what is this doing for you? This is taking the settings of the printer and saying, hey, uh, I found that the bed is kind of angled this way. So as I interpret all of those G-code commands that are coming through the, the slicer, the cure, whatever you want to call it, we call it the host, I think. Now. Uh, whatever, in this case, Repetia, whatever it's putting into this printer, it's going to say, okay, we're going to make an adjustment. If it's around, you know, a certain area on the printer that we know is lower, we're going to minus a little bit from that. So it's going to actually just take that print and kind of angle it whichever way, just a little bit, and, and compensate for that. And that's how I understand that it works. Again, not an expert, not the guy that made it, just trying to tell you what I know. Uh, hopefully this is enough to get you going. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, put them in there. I've been very good about getting back to everybody that I can and I hope I can help you because this is definitely a big undertaking and this is a great step and it's a great thing to have that Z probe on there uh, if it works um, but definitely hit me up and be on the lookout for that scaling video that's coming right after this one thanks guys